we are here. Hello. Happy Thursday. We are right on time tonight. A rare occurrence. But sometimes it happens. We are not disqualified yet. Um, tonight's topic is mindset. We are talking about, we're going to give you some tips to help you with your mindset. We're going to talk about the show last weekend, which her mom did not come to. I was all alone at the horse show. Um, we're going to talk I took, about... I took care of Harvey, though. Yes, you took care of Harvey. Um, we're going to talk about the stretch circle because that relates to relaxation. So if you have any questions about dealing with relaxation, getting your horse to stretch down, we're going to cover that tonight. We have a lot to cover. So first and foremost, if you haven't seen yet, in Amelia's Dressage Club, we're doing a mindset hack challenge. So basically, if you have a mindset hack, please go into Amelia's Dressage Club and share it there. Just use hashtag mindset hack. Basically, what's one thing that you do to help you with your mindset? Herman has one that he's going to share with us in a second. Also, we are doing a flash sale on our mindset workshop this weekend only. So the link is there in the description if you want to check it out. What is your mindset hack? Oh, God. Make it seem like it's such a big deal. It's, it's not. a big deal. It's, it's Get ready. Simple. It's just, it's a silly little thing. So before I go down the center line at a horse show, um, the last thing I tell myself is, let's just go horseback riding. And so it just, because I'm, you know, I've got all kinds of other thoughts as I'm going around and getting warmed up and getting my horse ready. But my last thought before I go into the arena is, let's just go horseback riding. And so I'm just riding my pony. Yes. It just changes changes my mindset, right? I'm in a different. Yeah. I definitely like going to the horse show last weekend. I was struggling a little with my mindset. If I'm completely honest, it's been like a hard few months. We've had a lot going on and Harvey hasn't been well, and it's been like really tough. And I think sometimes we all get into this negative downward spiral where it's like, I'm not good enough. I suck. I'm going to go out there and embarrass myself. Uh, my horses aren't going well. I'm not riding well. And when you get into that negativity, it's not a good place to be. You know, it feeds itself and there's no good outcome. Yeah. And, you know, as um, my mentor tells me, if I tell myself horror stories, I feel horrible. Yeah. Yeah. So a couple of things I do for my mindset is I always set an intention like for my ride or for my horse show. And at the last horse show, I was like, you know, how lucky am I to have two great horses to be at the horse show to feel healthy enough to ride? And I just wanted to feel proud and really enjoy the time with my horses. So that was kind of what I tried to shift to instead of having like all these terrible thoughts about how bad I was. Um, another little hack that I use for myself. So on the first day, I always go down in school the day before. And on Friday, or it was Thursday, I guess, last Thursday, I rode Kensington at the show and he felt like terrible. Like he just felt so stiff and like he was kind of nervous and I called her mom and I was like, I don't know. He just feels terrible. I think I'm going to have to scratch tomorrow. And I think sometimes it's good to give yourself an out, like to say, all right, I'm going to try my best. And if, if it's not right, then don't do it. You know, there's no harm in that. And so with Kensington, I kind of changed my strategy a little bit. And I went out super early in the morning because I didn't ride in the afternoon. So I got him out super early in the morning. I did like a light ride, really focused on suppleness and relaxation. I put him back in his stall. And then I did a lot of like stretching, like carrot stretches, body work. I put the beamer on him. And then when I got on him in the afternoon, he felt so good. Like it was crazy. He felt like a different horse. He was soft and supple and i did just like a super short warm-up i went in the ring and he was awesome so he was like third behind stefan and sabine which i was very proud of so it goes from it's like not a bad day i'm gonna scratch and my horse is like terrible to um yeah that but that's horses for you right stuff of life yeah the other thing um one of my clients was with me at the horse show and 
it it was a big show, right? Like all the Olympians are there. There's a lot of really good horses and you get intimidated. Like for sure you do. Like everyone's here. Everyone is watching. And I just told her and she even brought it up too. It was like, no one really cares. Like, like we think everyone cares, but they don't. They're busy. They're riding their horse. Right. They're thinking about what they're doing. Right. They're worried that their horse isn't going to go well. So, so they're doing, they're riding their horse. They're not, nobody's watching. Yeah. And the other thing I was talking to another um, rider down there is that anyone who is critical is not a true horseman. Like if you're a true horseman, and you, you find the good in it. Right. But if you're a true horseman and you see someone having a bad ride, how do you feel? You just think, oh, God, they're struggling today. Yeah. You feel such empathy for them. They're just you're like, struggling. Oh, We've man. all been there. Right. And so we need to be supportive of one another. And we need to have that empathy and that support for when you do have a bad ride or when your horse spooks or when you get dumped in the dirt because we have all like – a hundred percent been there. And it's really important to understand that horses at the end of the day, they're unpredictable and they're prey animals. So the fact that they even let us ride them is like pretty amazing. So. Well, does speak to their noble character and how wonderful they are, but on saying that things can go South in a hurry and it does, it's gone on for everybody. And you know, you hope it doesn't happen in front of the judge, but sometimes it does. Yeah. Yeah. So let us know if you're watching here live, what your mindset hack is. What is one thing that you do to help with your mindset? Because your mindset is so important. Like if, what is it you say? Think you can. Oh, if you say you can, or you say you can't, you're right. Yes, which is true. And it's also really important, I think, when you're riding is to try to stay positive and focus on the positive. That is so important. And we all get so type A about Well, like, you were saying something earlier about, you know, you have to look at your ride in its entirety. Yeah. Right. If you were on your horse for 30 minutes and you had, you know, two minutes of a bad moment, so then 28 minutes were good. So, but what are you focusing yeah. on? It, it it's in its entirety. It isn't just the two minutes where things went horribly, horribly wrong. That was part of a bigger picture. And that's right. something that, yes, you have to address that and look at and remember the things that didn't go right. So you can improve those things. But that, that wasn't the whole ride. Yeah. And, and we all do that where we blow up the negative moment right. or like the one mistake you just repeat it over and over again, or like the one time your horse spooked. And they're actually in the mindset workshop, there's a lecture from um, a PhD, Dr. Beth, and she talks about nervous system co-regulation. And there's a word for that. I forget what it is, but it's basically where you like over expand the negative moments and then you squash all the good. I'm sure there's a psychologist that's yes. gonna be giving us the term here yeah. in a minute. But, um, but so here's people coming in with their hacks. Um, have fun and enjoy my horse. That's a good one. Sing a song. That's a good one. I say out loud, this is going to be fun. <laughs> yes, this is going to be fun. Um, I will. That's a that's one from Conrad Conrad, Conrad Schumacher. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. You and I just you could just hear him sitting at the side of the arena, and you say to yourself, I will. <laughs> he, I yeah. will in he, that his, heavy accent. Yeah. <laughs> he did that to one of our students. She was struggling with her flying changes and he, he three, two, one, I, I will. will. Yeah. <laughs> um, so another thing that we were just talking about actually, because we were doing a it was fun. We were doing a brainstorming session with my team to help find strategies to help our students actually like utilize and implement our programs, which is super interesting to think about. But um, one big hack and something that's really important is consistency. And the more consistent you are, the easier it gets. And by consistency, we're talking about every day you get out and you do something. Yes. It doesn't necessarily mean you'll be on your horse, but you read literature, you, you study, you listen, yeah. you watch, clip your horse and you watch the horse shows. And yeah, 
get inspired and reinvigorated and all of these things, but that's on a daily basis. Yeah. Because the more consistently that you ride, I mean, yes, all those other things, but the more consistently that you ride for one, it really helps your horse because horses yes. are creatures of habit. And so we, one of the questions we were brainstorming is like, how do we help people on days where they're not feeling motivated or where they don't have energy or they don't have time? And I was like, well, I've learned that if I don't ride for three or four days, it really is terrible. And I do get my horse out again and ride. So that's what keeps me motivated on days that like I don't feel good or I'm tired or like it's windy or it's cold. It's like, well, if I wait five days and then try to ride, it's going to be harder. Right. So it's going to be much worse. So do something with your horse as frequently as you can. And it makes everything better. Okay. Anything else on mindset? Any other hacks you have? I don't really have. I, I'm seeing now really what an important component that is. Because you say it a lot. Horseback riding is 90% mental. Yeah. And what an important component being in the right mind, having the right frame of mind to yeah. ride your horse. Like in Pajaski's book, it says, like, if you're angry, if you're having a bad day, just put the horse back in the barn because it's not going to go well. Yeah. Right. You know, and you and you have to get ready for your ride way before you get in the saddle. Yes. Right. The ride doesn't start yeah. in the saddle. The ride starts as you're going to the barn and you've got a plan and things are, you know, I'm going to this and that. And then things happen and you change the plan. But you have a plan way before you get in the saddle. Yeah, because you have to set up for success. It doesn't happen. You 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 plan that. Yeah. And and I see that a lot with riders when when they have the self doubt and mm -hmm. either they did all that to themselves before they even got on the horse, and then by the time they get on the horse, it's just a train wreck. Yeah, and that's especially true for us as teachers. Is like the students that come to their ride in a good state of mind, like where they're positive and they're calm and they're focused, we can help them. When you have a student come to a lesson and they're like negative and distracted and like, I'm we like, can't do anything. How am I going to make this situation any <laughs> right. better? Yeah. So it, it is so important. And I think mindset is something that it, like there's a quote that says, the way you do one thing is the way you do everything in life. And so like the way that you are when you're with your horse is the same as how you are at home and with your family and the way you treat your colleagues. And it's like this overarching thing in your life is getting control of your mind. Right. Yeah. And so I think horses just bring that to a next level and they really. Right. Because with, horses and i was telling this to somebody else the other day with horses there is an immediate negative consequence and there's a negative result to that yeah. you can go about in your normal day and not have that negative result <laughs> like you will if you do that with a horse right that whole concept that the horse is your mirror like you can go and we all know people that are this way that way and they're in their day and they're yelling at whatever and <laughs> You do that with a horse and it is going to be a disaster. And there's this, that immediate uh, consequence to your bad behavior when you're around horses. Yeah. But the the flip side of it is there's also a more immediate positive. Absolutely. When you're horses. in the right space and you're, 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 you're chi, your aura, you're all groovy, right? Uh, you know, go with the hippies. But if you're groovy there with your horses, your horses are like, hey. You're yeah. okay. And if you're not, the horses are standoffish and skittish because you're scaring them. Yeah. So um, I'm sorry. I've only got Facebook user, but uh, what you say there, that one. This one? No, nope, the one up. It's not key? fair to my horse if I'm not consistent. Absolutely. That is the God honest truth. That yeah. is gospel. That is spiritual truth right there. It is not fair to my horse if i am not consistent right that is yeah. that's the stuff of life right there yeah 
And we all have days like you have days that you don't feel like it or you don't feel good or you're, you know, or whatever, but and, your horse needs you to show up. Yeah. And then, you know, do something a little different on those days, like just do groundwork or groom your horse or hand walk your horse or lunge your horse or go for a trail ride. I think that's okay also to give yourself that permission if you're like really having a bad day. It was funny during our brainstorming session, um, Nick from our team, she would, she told the story of the her kids with the vegetables. What did yeah. she say it was? Um, they could reject like one vegetable off their plate, but they had to eat all the rest of right. them. Ref the right of vegetable refusal. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of like that, you know, with your horses. Like you can give yourself one day. Like if you really are having a bad day or you feel sick or it's like, you know, whatever. You can skip one day, but that's it. Yeah. I mean, it's one thing if you're bedridden and, you know, you broke your leg. But, you know, aside from that, if you're ambulatory, you got to get there. Yeah. So anyways, check out our workshop on mindset. There's a lot of great information in there. There's like a lecture I did. We have a lecture with Dr. Beth, there's a bunch of techniques, like specific techniques to help your mindset when you're not riding, talk about visualization, and then there's also specific things to do when you are riding. So check that out if you haven't yet. We are going to talk a little bit specifically about relaxation when you are riding your horse, how to achieve relaxation. This week's YouTube video was about the stretch circle. And what do you have to say about the stretch circle? Don't pull and don't hyperventilate and speedy because there's no relaxation in that. <laughs> yes, but the stretch circle, it really is a test of relaxation because in order for your horse to really stretch and put their head down, they can't be they looking can't around. Run. Well, they can't look around. They can't run fast. They have to stay consistent in that trot. That balance has to be there. And uh, if they're not relaxed, they're going to hurry when you let go of the rain or when you stretch the reins down. So let me know in the comments if you liked this week's YouTube video. It, hopefully you've watched it. It was a little different. So Nicole from my team, she's a judge. It was fun because I did like a bad stretch circle and she judged it. And then I talked through how to improve the stretch circle and get a better score. So it was a little bit of a different format, but we're trying to do some new things. Um, okay, so a few questions here. First question is from Kathy. How do you recommend dealing with a reactive young horse in new places and in overcrowded situations and claustrophobic spaces? Make his world small. Meaning? So expose him to few things, right? Put him on a small circle, a little lunging. If you're riding him, still a smaller circle in the middle of the arena and slowly work your way into more and more exposure. Yeah, that's a good one. But, you know, if if he's a little excitable and you got to let some of the steam out of the pot, you know, you're at a horse show or whatever, you there's a lunging area for specifically that. You know, if he's so keyed up that he can't even think because he's got so much energy, Lunge him a little bit, let some steam out of the pot, and then go expose him to these things. Yeah. And groundwork, like you mentioned. Yeah. I'm a fan of groundwork, getting your horse out multiple times. And then also, um, I think, like at the show last weekend, it was crowded. There were a lot of horses in the ring. And you really... when And it was raining. And it was raining, yes. Luigi and I got drenched, but he was so good in the rain. He's, no, but I'm just saying it's just one more thing yes, that's happening, right? I mean, the rain's horseshoes. in their eyes. The rain's and they can't hear. Yeah. They can't see. It was cloudy. That's horse shows. At horse shows, things always happen. You have to just kind of expect that things are going to happen at a horse show. But when you're riding in a crowded arena, it's like driving on the 405 in Los Angeles, which is where we live. Right, in heavy traffic. So you have to be aware of like everything around you where all the other horses or cars or whatever you want to think of are. You want to stay away from dangerous drivers that are driving crazy. Right. You can see them coming in the rear view mirror. You can see the guy rearing in the corner. You just turn <laughs> Go away. away from them. Do not put your horse in harm's way. Steer away. Ride towards the space in the arena. That's a good tip. If, if you see like there's 
five horses down at that end, just turn across the ring and go back to the other end. Don't ride where all the other horses are. And when there's a lot of horses, you have to, you can't ride like your perfect patterns, right? Like if you're in an arena by yourself and you're like, okay, I'm going to do a three loop serpentine and then I'm going to go across the diagonal. When you're riding with a bunch of other horses, it's kind of like just survive and stay out of the way. You don't always get to ride your perfect circle because there's too much traffic to do that. Right. So you see where that horse is, you move your line. I always opt for going behind horses. I don't, That's a good tip. I don't cross in front of them. That's a good tip. I just stay out of harm's way. That keeps me calm. And if I'm calm, you know, my horse is going to be calmer. Okay. Next question is from Emma. I struggle with a horse that gets anxious when she does head goes up and the strides become tense and less fluid. I've had her for 10 years and still struggle in going to new places. Um, once she's aware, she'll relax. But the first 30 minutes, any tips or help would be appreciated. So if you know that in 30 minutes you're going to be okay, just amble around for 30 minutes and then get to work. I mean, if that's who she is, it doesn't have to happen any faster. I'm read, you know, as you read that, I'm like, it's not happening soon enough. My horse doesn't get more relaxed when I want it to be relaxed and she better get relaxed because she's not relaxed yet. And I want her to be relaxed right now. So if it if takes you let it take you know, all the time, the time it, it takes, takes, it, it takes, takes less, less time. time. So if you know that in 30 minutes, she's going to be fine, take 30 minutes. Add that into the, your prep for when you got a ride. If your ride's at 10, 15, then you know at 930, you're going to get on, start doing your thing. No pressure because you've given yourself enough time. Yeah, but there's also things you can do. Like if your horse is tense, I always do lots of bending lines, circles, serpentines. The more that you can get your horse off your inside leg and connect it into the outside rein and keep them looking to the inside, um, that helps them to relax. Because if you just go like around the, the edge of the arena and let them look yeah, no, off into the distance. Are, serpentines are key. Um, so there's definitely some stuff that you can do to like to help them relax in a new um, situation. Okay. Next question. Tiffany, my question is how do you balance between moving a horse to aid in relaxation without tiring them? I fire with my anxious guy. I have to work so hard to get him to relax that he then becomes so tired and I'm afraid to keep asking or I've noticed I've been on for 45 minutes and I don't want to push for more. That's a really good question. Yeah. Actually. Cause that, I mean, you, you do see people lunging their horses so long that they're just too tired to misbehave. And that is really more about what you were saying it, that you've got to try and find the way to get them onto the aid sooner, which is the serpentine, the groundwork, that small world. I make turns through the circle. Um, just keep refocusing him into the arena. And yeah, that's not an easy one because, yeah, once they're too tired, then you've got problems with fatigue and that you really don't want to be dealing with. So, yeah. But I think sometimes um, you go through that with horses. For example, I have a young horse, a five year old, in training right now, and he can be like a little bit tense and a little bit anxious. And for the now I rode him like it's been hard this winter because it's been raining and so it hasn't been so consistent. And today for the first time, I was like, oh, he's a little tired. And it, it was kind of a good thing because I didn't have to deal with the anxiousness. So I could just work on getting him on the aids. So sometimes you do have to get to that place where your horse is a little tired because then they can listen better. Yeah. And and in that, then you have to be like, okay, this is my chance to really get him on the aids. So that then eventually when they are tense and hot, that they still understand to stay on the aids. That they can control their emotions. Yeah. Because they have to control their emotions just like we do so that they can control their emotions Even when and they're still excited. listen to you. Yeah. Right. But that, but that comes, takes time. Right. That comes with maturity. And that's where like my Grand Prix horse, Harvey, he, he's so amazing because when he's tense and hot, all that energy goes into the movement. 
when he was younger, it didn't always. It would transfer into like explosions. <laughs> but then when you can get the energy to transfer into what you want it to be, that's when it really becomes special. And most of the top horses. The time frame? Time frame? Time frame, like six years. Okay. Five years, right. But most of the horses at the elite level are just on the brink of explosion. Like they have to have that much energy and but still be relaxed and still be on the aids. And it's a hard balance to find for sure. Okay, next question. How do you keep your horse relaxed when going from extended walk to collected walk? Shortening the reins gets him very excited. Um, I practice that a lot at home before I get to the show. And I do it and then I go do some work, you know, some trot work, some canner work. And then just, that's um, that mare that I'm riding. You know, I go to gather up the rain. She wants to grab the bit and run off. And um, it's just recently now that I can make tempo changes inside the walk. But um, I leg yield a lot in the walk. Turn on the forehand a lot in the walk as soon as the horse starts to take over. Okay, sorry. I was reading and trying to find a new another good question. All right. Um, my kids help a lot with desensitizing my horse. Yes, I. they do. <laughs> do you um, remember that horse that we went to go see? And the kids were oh, on those big wheels and yeah. all kinds of commotion and wild. And the kids are wrestling and firecrackers. And the horse didn't care. Yeah. It was like, oh, my God, this horse is bomb proof. This is going to be terrific. And I got on it. And it reared straight up. Do you remember that? <laughs> Yes. Oh, boy. I don't think it liked you very much. <clears throat> well, he didn't like the trainer either. The, the owner it was yeah. pretty. It was, yeah. Anyways. But but definitely, I, I think that it's a hard balance to find the balance between, like, relaxation and energy in your horse. Because you have to have both things. And it's always, I always feel like you're you're going that line a little bit of like either your horse is like a little too relaxed and sleepy or they're a little too hot and sharp and then being able to control the temperature like to just the right temperature is tricky that the gray pre that you see in a lot of the videos mercurio he's tricky that way because he can at the beginning be kind of lazy and then he if you start really working on stuff he gets super hot and anxious and it's just it's a balance. It's a hard balance. Right. Time. So you build it up when you get too much, then you ease it out. And when yeah. you get, then you bring it back up. Easier said than done. Yeah. That's the reader's digest version of how to do that. Yeah. All right. I hope that you all really enjoyed tonight's Facebook Live. I hope that you are going to be thinking about your mindset this weekend. If you're on my email list, we're going to be sending out a little mindset tip for you each day this weekend to help you out. And don't forget to check out the mindset workshop. Workshop, excuse me. There's a lot of great things in there. So I hope you all have a wonderful evening and a wonderful Easter weekend. Easter, that's right. We were talking to some foreign friends and they're all like, oh yeah, tomorrow's a holiday and not for us. Not for us. So um, hopefully you get to have a little extra time off this weekend. Um, yeah, in Canada and what, New Zealand? Yeah. What are we going to do for Easter? Go to the barn? <laughs> well, it's going to rain, so. <laughs> Maybe we'll make some Easter eggs. Yes. Yes. We we'll make, make eggs them. anyway. Yeah. All right. Yes. Happy... Levi. Hello to Levi. <laughs> yes. Happy weekend, everyone. Bye.